Good morning. It's uh, zero, barely sun over the horizon, early 30 in the morning, and we have our coffee, so that's a plus. But I'm sure you can tell by the thumbnail that disaster has struck here at Garage Time TV. Yes, it's very sad actually. Um, you see the bus is jacked up quite high today and it's not a good thing. So let me tell you what's going on. So we've got the bus up in the air and I'm going to show you a picture as to why we're in this situation. Yeah, so that's a little smoky. So what's going on is we've got some severe issues with the engine. We've got our cooling system in. I showed you guys this last week when we made our um, engine mounts down below. And we put coolant in it. We hooked up a rough wiring. It is literally just sitting in here. It is just sitting in here. Um, just resting and wire jumpers everywhere to connect to everything. But it's all connected. And the problem is we put coolant in here, some water just for a test, and we built pressure in the system and we got all that white smoke you saw. So I took the, the head covers off, the valve covers off, I took the cams out, I retorqued the heads just to make sure maybe I didn't do it right. I don't know. So even after retorquing those heads and resealing everything and double, triple, quadruple checking everything, we fired it back up and it was great. Idle started to go down. The idle was really high. We were running like 1,400, 1,500 RPMs. And the idle started working its way down. So we had solved our vacuum leak issue we had as well, fighting this coolant. And then we were doing the idle relearn process. So when you do the idle relearn process, you put the key on for 20 seconds, you turn it, let it run for 10 minutes, key off for 20 seconds, key back on for 20 seconds, and then you let it run for five minutes and the idle's relearned. But when we did that in between the 10 and five minute segments and fired it back up, all that white smoke came back, just like it was in that picture. And uh, yeah, there's a lot going on. Let me show you some more. So on the underside here, these are what we built last week. And you know, I even tried to vice grip the O2 sensor on to see if that would help anything, and it didn't. But we've got a lot of oil down here. Um, when it was running, you could see there was uh, bubbling oil out of here. You see there's an oil drip here. I even, I tightened these down probably a little too much, but these are brand new valve cover gaskets, and it's just leaking everywhere. There's coolant drip, that's what that big black mark is here. That was coolant dripping off of it, uh, the oil coming off of it, and you can see some of the drip marks on the headers here as well, just the drips of the oil coming down. It would get hot, and you can see right here, it's really bad right here. And you can see all the oil built up here. Um, remember, we, we put a lot of new seals on this. So when we come to the other side, we're getting a lot of the same. So you can see the oil that's covering the bolt here. Um, there's just grease and crap everywhere. There's more of that running down, just a lot. And so when it was running, Again, so when it was running, I had it right where I'm sitting, and you can see here on the ground, there's some of the antifreeze that's still staying in the concrete and the oil ring. So we're burning a lot of oil and we're burning coolant. All new gaskets, new head gaskets, so that means a couple things. Our heads are warped, we've got a crack, or the head gaskets we got are just defective, which I don't really believe. Um, so again, we paid 120 bucks for this engine, and there's probably a really good reason for that. So we're gonna have to pull it. Now the good news is I live in a really big city and there's a lot of people that have a lot of parts for sale on Marketplace all the time. And I have sourced another dual overhead cam Subaru engine for 500 bucks, way more than we paid for this one. But there's a few more green flags about this one than the red that came with this is that the guy is a super mechanic and the engine is from a running car and there's proof of all that. So that's a really good plus. And we have everything already set up, ready to go for this. So we're gonna drop this engine today. We're gonna pull it out, separate the engine and transmission together, 
go pick up this new engine this afternoon, hopefully for less than 500 bucks, but you know, marketplace, we'll see. And if we even get it and we'll put them back together, if it all works out and we'll throw it back in here. So it's a very, very long day ahead of us. Hence why we're starting when the sun is. So we're gonna start disconnecting cables and draining the coolant, whatever's left of it and uh, dropping the engine and transmission together. That way we can reunite the new ones when I go meet the guy here in here past a freckle, which means 11 o'clock. So let's get working. ahead of us to get this on here but I'll definitely be reaching out to my friend Yogi for that jack again because this is horrible with this and it's a lot of weight and I don't want to break anything so I'm definitely going to reach out to him we're gonna get this hooked up here we're gonna put it on our makeshift engine stand that's on the ground that we did the initial test on like that wooden one with the four wheels on it we're gonna get that on there and then we're going to separate the engine and the transmission and have everything on deck ready to go for uh, when we go pick up that other one. That way we can immediately join them together and slide it back underneath. Um, uh, so frustrating. Part of the process though, right? We just love doing this all the time. Just so good, wonderful. A few moments later. All right, time to pull off the adapter. Um, we've got to. I'm going wrong. No, I'm right. Uh, got to pull off this transmission. Um, so when the new one arrives, we just made it up. Uh, I've definitely done this a time or two, but I guess in. Positive is better to find out now than on the side of the road somewhere. But I just could not figure out what was going on. And it's, again, this is not the kind of engine I've really ever messed with before. Um, just because I'm used to the old stuff like, you know, the Fiat. And that thing fires up every time. Start when you've thrown in these crazy computers and sensors every which way. Just why? Just why? 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 I just don't understand. But that's fine. We get more horsepower with the computers, so I guess I can't really complain. After all, we are doubling the factory horsepower with the Subaru engine over the original air cooled Volkswagen one. So, a uh, good sign so far is the seller of the new engine, new to me engine, uh, messaged me first this morning, asking if I was still going to come today, and of course I am. So, that's a really good sign. Um, that he's a serious seller, which is nice because I'm sure you have experience as I do on Marketplace where people say one thing and it turns out to be another. So um, I'm really hoping that this works out well for us. Um, out of the donor car it came from, it's coming from a 96 uh, Legacy. So only two years um, older than this engine, but it's the same engine, same everything. So our mounts that we just made are gonna work. Um, all of our wiring harness is gonna work for us. And I think it has, it still has the air conditioning, air compressor on it. Like the air, condi air conditioning compressor, AC compressor, it has it. Also has like the tensioner and it has the alternator and um, it's just really greasy. 
um, which is a sign of it just being run for a really long time. Um, so hopefully that's a sign for us that we just plug it up and hit the ground running because I really don't want to do this all over again. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, another good news is that when we had this running in the bus, um, our axles were spinning, our CV axles here were spinning, so it's like in gear on accident. There we go, that should be neutral. Maybe, maybe not. But um, I think that's neutral. Nope. Well, we'll find neutral one of these ways, but these were spinning uh, when this was idling, so that's a good sign that our transmission works. So we're gonna get a, another dolly, and we're gonna put this on that. Then we can start pulling off our adapter plate and great. So as we continue to tear this down, um, we're gonna definitely put this motor on marketplace, try and make some of our money back. Many hours later. Well, we're back and we picked up our engine. We got the AC compressor, the idler for that. Um, the belt is really cracked, but we're gonna replace all that. I'm gonna take the belt off anyway. I don't wanna run the compressor dry, but it is greasy, um, but there is oil in it and there's no signs of head gasket issues. The typical oxidized aluminum chalkiness on the inside of the cooling system is pretty normal. Um, just, just greasy, uh, but it's not a bad thing. That means it runs. So I did spin it over when I bought it. Um, have good compression on all four cylinders. Um, you know, we've got to put our thermostat on it, but that's not a big deal from our old one. So we are we're going to bring this out. We've got the crane here. We're going to go set it down and we're going to start joining this together and we're going to throw it back in. Uh, Yogi was home, so I grabbed that jack as well. Going to make our lives so much easier. Yogi, again, thank you so, so much. Uh, lifesaver, beyond a lifesaver. So let's get this thing out and let's start mating up the transmission. Start reinstalling. back in this position. I feel like we were here like two weeks ago, but we are getting ready to install it here. Uh, again, Yogi coming in clutch, thank you so much. Um, we did a lot of stuff off camera really quick. We put the adapter plate back on, the flywheel, the clutch and pressure plate, all that's back on and torqued and everything. I'm just trying to get this thing back in there. Um, this guy says it runs, so we're gonna get in there and find out. So um, we're gonna start feeding it in. Um, I was able to clean up some of the wiring in here um, while we we're waiting to uh, go meet him. So that's gonna make this a lot easier to find out where stuff goes. Um, how to transfer over a couple things. We still have to put our thermostat in our water pump, uh, the bottom of the thermostat housing for the radiator hose. Um, we still gotta install that um, from our original engine. We had to bring over this bracket. Um, we cut the AC compressor um, belt. It was really, really bad. So I didn't wanna put that on there and I don't wanna run it dry anyway. So let's get this installed, start plugging everything back up and see how it goes.
Well, the engine is in. We've got everything connected electrically. We've got the cooling system plumbed up. Everything is tightened down, ready to go. Fuel system, all that good stuff is ready to go. And I start filling it with just plain water and our water pump leaks. So uh, luckily our original engine has a new water pump, so we will deal with that um, later. It's not too hard, but I don't want to spend all the time in changing a water pump and all that stuff just for it not to work. So I'm gonna do one more check on everything to make sure it's all connected, vacuum lines, everything. Um, and then we're gonna put some power to this and see how it goes. So cross your fingers and uh, we'll see. So I have the fuel pump through a jumper directly to the battery. We're gonna turn on the computer, turn on the fuel pump, see what we get. See what we get. guys well that's gonna be the end of this episode it's been a very very long day we got that idle down to 750 800 rpm which is exactly what it needs to be um, we did the relearn process um, and it made a, a huge difference you know that initial first start after a long time this has been sitting just like the other one came right down just like it's supposed to let it sit five more minutes nice and low idle um, we are in really good shape to do a driveway drive up and down and to do a maybe like down the cul-de-sac and back um, we have our axles ready to go installed and i think that's what we're going to do next i'm very excited to say that i think our next episode is going to be us taking this on the road for the first time up and down nothing crazy just you know up and down the block just to see how it does and it's going to be awesome i mean we've got open exhaust which we've got to fix you know but nah, neighbors won't mind Let's get pumped for this first drive. This is huge progress. I'm so, so excited and so happy to share it with you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, we'll see you.